this one honors oh, us. Oh, right. You're probably in the neighboring houses, actually. Hello. Yay. I don't have to kill any of you guys. Good thing... It's a good thing that sense that tents are completely soundproof and no one knows that I just murdered the leader of their entire tribe. That's welcome and convenient. Hi. Ranabi, really? Oh yeah. You're a spellcaster. That's interesting. You've slain one of my people and you must pay with your life. Alright. What if I pay with your life instead? Does that does that work for you? I should have asked that first, shouldn't I? I'm sorry. Robe of Erin Dan the Wise. Oh, constant effect of shield on self. That's cool. That's actually kind of cool. Fortify agility on self for these other light gauntlets. What am I? What do my gauntlets do right now? Are those my gauntlets? No. Are you my gauntlets? I have bracers that have 123 armor rating. So not amazing. I do like the idea of these buffs, though. Agility and shield on self. I'm, not, I'm probably going to go back to my glass ones because of the sheer defense bonus, but... I don't know. I don't know how to compare shield points versus armor rating. The shield could be pretty good. It's why he was constantly glowing with a bubble. I'll have to look up how... I basically need to look up what the math is on how exactly shielding works and figure out how to compare that to armor. Am I always going to be glowy? Look at me with my bubble. <laughs> it's like I'm playing Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> that's, just, that's just always gonna be there now, huh? Yeah, there's 10 p points there. I think agility probably combined. Yep, fortify attribute. So it's in its own category with that stuff. Gives me 130 agility though, right? 105. What? Fortify attribute 25 and five. Isn't my agility already at 100? So why is it only at that much? Well, I have a constant shield at least. That's neat. Except for the part where it's going to give me star vision at all times. That might be kind of distracting, honestly. Ash, Ahu Ashe also has shielding. Thank you for your contribution. And these were both light, right? Yeah, that's the convenient part. What do you have, sir? Medium armor? Hey, shield 10 points on self on medium armor. The Mountain Spirit. I wonder if I, uh... Let's see. First of all, if I equip it, is it, like, even more shielding? Yeah, they both they both apply. That's interesting. Where's my shield? Uh... You? Yeah, it resist Magicka. Yeah, it seems like a no-brainer. Um, it would be tempting to raise my ma my medium armor stat to see if I get better armor rating out of that when I have a proper stat for it and things like that. But it's uh, my current chest piece gives me sixty percent resist of all magicka, which is pretty. That's pretty good. Even if I am finding more and more constant effect stuff, and the idea of having constant effect stuff on my character is very appealing to me. Uh crap. Whoa, it's a hunt. Oh, that's the one I. That's that's my current one. I f mixed him up for a second there. Mountain Spirit is worth 3,600. That's so crap. And it's so heavy. Oh, I only have to get like, rid of like one point, though. That's not too bad. What would I get rid of first? It probably should be like one of the Tanto type things. Daedra Dagger doesn't have a great ratio. Ebony Staff's pretty crap, actually. That's one of the worst ones. There we go. I'm not super concerned about leaving money on the floor because I'm drowning in money. Hi, everyone. Don't mind me. I killed all your leadership, and I'm going to not talk to any of you. Hello. How do you like all the stars on the screen? Fun? Now, with Ashkun, Ashkan Ulath Pal and his supporters dead, we may consider the Nerevarine prophecies and how you might be named... Era Ben Imsun Nerevarin. Now, with Ulath Palin's supporters out of the way, it is a simple matter to be named Nerevarin of the Era Ben Imsun. All you need is to persuade Gulakan Han Amu to become the Ashkan of Era Ben Imsun. 
seek him out in his Gulak yurt. Be prepared, however, Han Amu is not the material one would choose when looking to make an Ashkan. He may be difficult to persuade. Han Amu is the son of our former chief, Erin Amu, but he is nothing like his father. His birth gives him a strong claim to lead the tribe, but of the many virtues required by an Ashkan, he lacks only three things. Strength, strength, courage, and wisdom. Yeah, he's a great leader except for his total lack of strength or courage or wisdom. So what, what does he have? To counterbalance the lack of those? Oh well. May you find me worthy you, of your attention. You guys have to live with whatever whatever fate this place has. Wasn't Han Amu one of these guys? Yep. Hello. Yantus. Han Amu. No matter what my Nari says, I'm not interested. I don't want to be Ashkan. Love me more. There we go. Maybe that'll help. Yes. I recognize it. It is the war axe of my father, the war axe of Aaron Amu. Ulath Pal had it, uh, had it from my father and carried it as Ashkan. But what has that to do with my wanting to be an Ashkan? Let's give him the <laughs> give him the axe of Aaron Amu and make a little speech. Do I have that axe in my inventory? Oh, let's give it to him and make a speech. Thank you. Your lesson is clear. It is the axe that gives strength in war. And it is the idea of the axe that gives confidence to the tribe, but it is the Ashkan who bears the axe, the Ashkan who accepts the responsibility for the safety of the tribe, who holds the fate of the tribe in his hands. That is a sobering lesson, and I must give it thought. Please, I don't want to be Ashkan, don't you understand? I won't be any good at it, and I'm going to be a complete failure, and everyone will want... Uh, everyone will hate me even more than they do now. Please. I just want to be left alone. What Minari says. That just loops. How wonderful. Welcome, Outlander. You, so you sound like the voice that they probably used to voice a lot of the ghouls in Fallout 3. <laughs> Hanamu. How about you? Do you care about the whole situation with Hanamu? You live in his house, apparently. Do, 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 do. No input on this conversation we just had? You know about the prophecies. We know about the prophecies. Our Ashkan and Gulakan say they are full of superstition. There will be trouble if you ask, if you speak with them. Perhaps you should speak to our wise woman, Mani Rai. Uh, we're way past that point. I hope... If you hope to persuade Hanamu to becoming Ashkan, you must find some way to give him strength, willpower, and intelligence. Hanamu is so unpopular with the tribe, and he knows it. But if he bore tokens recognized by all of the tribe as conferring strength, willpower, and intelligence, it will give him confidence to accept the responsibilities of tribe leadership. So I already gave him the axe that gives strength, so I need to find something that gives him willpower and intelligence? By tokens, I mean well-known tribal heirlooms, object of power handed down through the generations by Gulakans and Ashkans. Such tokens are marks of power and distinction, and might give Hanamu the abilities and confidence he needs. Okay. Tokens. Do I just need to grab stuff off the corpses of the people I just killed? Do they all have t fitting tokens? I mean, should have room for you regardless. The Wind of Ahaz. Also have space for that. Hello, Corpsey McCorpsington. Your inventory sucks and is unimpressive. Ebony Staff is why I dropped. An IB. Uh, Erundan the Wise. Ember Hand, Bitter Hand. I'll just grab them just in case. All the magical, unique items. Racer back. Hey, yeah, I got space for everything. Neat. Let's see if this works out. Yes, I recognize it. Ranabi wore that robe. The robe 
of Erudan the Wise. It was handed down to Rana Bithra's family. But what does that have to do with me wanting to be Ashkan? Let's give the robe of Erudan the Wise and make a little speech. Thank you. Your lesson is clear. It is the robe that gives wisdom it's in council, and is the idea of the robe that gives confidence to the tribe. But it is the Ashkan who wears the robe, and the Ashkan who accepts responsibility for the safety of the tribe. Who holds the fate of the tribe in his hands. This is a sobering lesson, I must give it thought. Try again then. You oh yeah, he's wearing the robe now. Outlander. He's actually wearing the robe. I recognize that. Ahaz wore that amulet. Senate kills heart of fire. Uh, Ahaz had it from his father, and Ahaz's father had it from Kenitu Nila, and Kenitu Nila had it from Senate Kil, a great witch warrior. But what has that to do, <laughs> to do with me wanting to be an Ashkan? I do not like green eggs and ham. Let's, we gave a speech. <laughs> Thank you. Your lesson is clear. It is the amulet that gives courage in battle, and is the idea of the amulet that gives confidence of the, of the tribe. But it is the Ashkan who wears the amulet, the Ashkan who accepts responsibility for the safety of the tribe, who holds the fate of the tribe in his hands. Now, with Ulathpal dead, I hold the fate of the tribe in my hands, and I must accept that responsibility. Thank you for your lesson. I shall be Ashkan of Era Binim soon. And I shall name you Nerevarine. Thank you, Pat Yelchin. I promise that as Ashkan, I shall do my best to amend the dark reputation of the Arabinim soon. And as my first action as chief, I now name you Arabinim soon Nerevarine, champion of the Arabinim soon, the protector of the people. And you must also go to the wise woman Mani Rai to get. From her, the seizing of the Arabinian Sum, an enchanted heirloom of the tribe, which shall be assigned to all Dunmer, as the Arabinian Sum have named you Nerevarine. Well, there we go. I just changed his life and inspired him and did all that not that funny stuff. And I, I really love the fact that every single time I gave an item, he ended it with like, but what does this have to do with me being Ashkan? Three times in a row, like with no ability to, tr to like, detect patterns. So, Pat Yelchin, you were called Nerevarine, and Hanamu is now our Ashkan. Many changes. Many changes. Well, now you are Arabinim Sun Nerevarine. Now, perhaps, we shall see what that means. I think I just finished this quest, by the way. Weren't they the last one? I think I am now Nerevarine and Hortator across the board. You've persuaded him to accept his responsibilities. Now we'll see if he grows in wisdom and becomes a god. A good and wise, and wise chief like his father. What about that one item? Peace-loving Arab Benim Soon. Now that we have an Ashkan, perhaps the peace-loving Arab Benim Soon can grow to be a prosperous tri a tribe once again. With my counsel, perhaps Hanamu will grow to be strong, wise leader like his father. I have no counsel, Nerevarine. We are both traveling in the dark. Red Mountain... I don't think I should really ask about Red Mountain, necessarily. Um... Counsel, take out the word, disturbing dreams. How do I get... the item they said to get? <laughs> Admire more. Admiration's not working! Welcome, friend. Admiration's not working! What do I do? I have been named Nerevarine by all four tribes of the Varden Fell Ashlanders, Ushulaku, Ahimusu, Zainab, and, and Arab and Imsun. Of the seven visions, the seven trials of the Incarnate, I am now fulfilled the fifth trial. Do I need to go all the way back to the Ushulaku camp to ask what to do next then? Continue. Let's see. Yes. I don't know if I know how to get the item. I mean, I guess it's not the most important thing in the world, technically, but I don't know if I know how to get the item. Huh. That's not the end of the world. Where's my... Oh, there's my... I lost that for a minute. We are way down here. 
There's this nice big dense central area I've never really been never really explored through before. Oh yeah, it's oh weird. I'm just looking at the map now and thinking about how long I've been playing and stuff like that, and just the realization of the fact that because the game has fast travel immediately, but only specific lines of fast travel, but it is immediately available and stuff, there are like whole weird paths to the map I've never set foot in. Like this chunk of map is isolated from that chunk of map, and this chunk of map that, like this is all connected because I've walked across this top area because of the lack of fast travel options around here. So this whole ch top, like, half of the map I've technically set foot on is all connected. But in the more... It's, it's fitting that in the more city-ish areas, this is one spot, this is one spot, and that's one spot, and I've never... I've never crossed the line in between them to actually uh, go from one to the other in the entire game. Most notably, Sedanin is where we started the game, and Balmor is literally the second place we went to. And we've never crossed that relatively narrow patch of land between them in the entire time that we've been playing. That's interesting. Alright. So, the good news is I believe everyone is happy with me now. Bad news is I think I need to go to, back to Urshilaku now. Which is, um, hard to get to due to the lack of actual, uh, paths that get you there. Might have to do the usual thing where I fast travel to a relatively close by area and then make do. Let's see. Temple Informant. That's just a random side quest. I just wanted to see if there's a, a, narrow, a main mission... Is there a main mission quest somewhere around here? Hortator Nerevarine. I've been named Hortator of the Three Great Houses and Nerevarine of the Four Tribes. Once I'm Hortator and Nerevarine, I should speak with the healer of the High Fane of Vivek. Okay, there we go. Good thing I checked. So my goal is to go speak with the healer of the High Fane of Vivek, Danso Injuls, to arrange the meeting. I need to go to Vivek now. I can make do with that. In the meantime, I'm currently in the middle of nowhere. Could go all the way there, or go south across unexplored territory. Let's do that! Hooray! Let's run all the way to Molag Mar, and therefore connect these chunks of maps that we've never technically traversed between before. Because I'm not super close to really any particular point, so I might as well take the more obscure path so we can at least see new-ish things, even if it is kind of blobby, repurposed landscape that we've mostly been in before. Go away, man. It's just not worth it to, to, to attack me like this. It's a frost at Tanark and I'm flying! How you doing? Good- having a good time? You're dead now. Congrats. Alright, south we go. Quite some time. This will be interesting. Oh, hey! It's one of these guys again. Hey, weird ogre monster. With- <laughs> They always have the nipple ring. And it's so big, it just looks painful. You're called an ogrim. One of the many creatures in the game that all have daedric hearts. As a common connecting tissue for all of them. I wonder if we can get 100 acrobatics from jumping my way over here. Feasible. I have a decent armor rating, and I wonder if the addition of a, of a shield percentage plus the health regeneration might just make me kind of unhurtable at some point with average enemies. I wonder if anything can go wrong with shielding. I think about the fact that your armor can be broken down over time. Your armor takes durability damage and gets less effective, but do enchantments get less effective when they're when the item they're on breaks down over time? Like I think being at partial durability gives you like a percentage-based amount of armor compared to the overall maximum armor that norm that the item normally would give you. I think that's how this works. I think that, I think I think the uh, attack weapons also work like that. But how does it handle enchant? How does it handle enchantments on an item that's breaking down? Is it still going to shield me for ten points regardless? Because in which case, having a bunch of like shield spells on my character once could be pretty effective. Is this more like Mar already? It is. That wasn't a very long trip at all. And now I can say that this is all connected now, technically. 
Especially since I basically ran from uh, Zainab all the way down to Molagmar over the course of this session. Does this hurt me? I don't think so. And there's our boat. Hey, Slaughterfish. It's really not a good idea, but whoops. Interesting decision-making process there. That's fine. Where are you? At some point you just start, need to start swinging in the dark and just hope you find them. Because it's just so dark and hard to see. Right, I'm trying to go to Vivek for more like Mar. I'm looking for a silt strider, not a boat. This is the town that looks just like Vivek, but tiny. And I believe there's a silt strider nearby. There you go. That was like a weird combination of there you go and there she blows and I didn't decide in advance which one I was going to go with. So just like a weird noise came out that isn't really excusable. Alright. Get me there. Get me there now. Ah, civilization. Weirdly organized buildings of civilization. <laughs> well, I'm back. Nice familiar territory after going amongst the tribes for a while. We may never need to go back to the Ushulaku ever again, considering ultimately I just needed them to be to name me. They they had to inform me of the whole process, obviously, but for their big the big thing we were building up to at the end of the day was just to get them to name me Nervurin for their tribe. And now I'm Nervurin and Hortator across seven organizations, all seven of them. And I'm ready to figure out what the next trial is. That was just time-consuming enough and world-spanning enough that I kind of feel like we might be near the end of the game, at least for the original vanilla storyline. Which means I need to figure out when I'm gonna- when I want to play the expansions. There's been some de debate on the issue about what- what I do for a Patreon series specifically. Uh, my standard operating procedure for playing a game usually is to play its DLCs also. Uh, if they are substantial content, and of course this was back in the old day when PC games got actual expansions, so obviously it's quite substantial. So I always kind of took it for granted that I was going to play Blood Moon and Tribunal. I only st I've only somewhat questioned it now that I've actually gotten to the end. Uh, that's not what I wanted to find. You did not give me the update I was hoping for. Gotta go all the way back to like the beginning. Wasn't it like 148? Do I still have it remembered? Kind of, yeah. No, that's not as helpful as just finding the quest that was in here. Uh, there we go. The healer of the High Fane of Vivek, Danso in Duels. High Fane of Vivek, Dancer in Duels. What the heck is that? I mean, this place. There's a place called the Temple. I can start- I can just start asking people. What is this about? Did you want to meet the Ar the Arch Cannon? Who? The Arch Cannon is in his- oh, you're Danso in duels. <laughs> Shit. Uh, the Arch Cannon is in his private quarters and he very much wishes to speak with you. But I am to warn you. Avoid confrontations with the Ordinators at all costs. The Arch Cannon will speak with the High Fane Ordinators, but if you are a wanted criminal, you, they may try to arrest you. If the blood of the faithful servants of the temple is spilled, it will make a reconciliation all that much more difficult. There's a private back entrance to Saryani's private quarters. Perhaps you might sneak past the Ordinators by stealth or magic. A door on the eastern canal side level leads through a small, a smaller room and into Saryani's private quarters. But the door is always locked, and the ordinators control the keys. I can probably unlock it myself, unless the keys are absolutely required. Canal side level, east side, gets the private quarters. Sneak past. The ordinators are highly trained, and sneaking past them, even aided by magic, may be very difficult. But if you can have any art and stealth and magic, you may be able to use it to avoid trouble. 
So I can probably cast hide, but I can also go into sneak mode, and I can also just outrun them pretty well so far. We'll see how this goes. It's, oop, not new. Save. Seems like a good story point to be saving in. So east side of this building, I assume? So I noticed that the, uh... Was it that building or this building? One of the buildings around here was had floors that were called like riddles or puzzles or something. So I can't help but wonder if like maybe, if maybe that stuff might be related to one of the trials. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be sent in to prove myself. All of wisdom. Underworks. This is technically kind of to the east. I don't know if I understand where I'm going though. Uh, wow, I made it. <laughs> I can actually clear those jumps. Well, that wasn't helpful. <laughs> Not what I was going for. Hi. Uh, five of gold, let's pay the gold. There we go. Isn't that nice? Okay, cool. Uh, could you help me find the leader? Citizen. Let's see. I need to find the arch cannon. I don't really know what... Uh, I don't even know much about what building they're in necessarily. I think it might be this one. It might be the next one though. I might have made a mistake there. A lot of names to try. Yeah, the puzzle canal. Beneath the palace of Vivek is the puzzle canal. A place of worship and testing for questing heroes. Hoping to receive Vivek's favor. Many choice treasures are guarded by Daedric servants in the Puzzle Canal's dark passages. Yeah, that description wasn't very encouraging, but the fact that it's called a Puzzle Canal is super encouraging. So I think we're in the wrong building. You see ah! Information Jesus. Added. I think this is more of a public area. Let's try the next building over. And then maybe to the east. It's gonna be a learning experience, like it always is, when I gotta find people. Wish they would stop startling me. Is this called the Palace of Vivek? Palace of Vivek. Top floor, trapped. Must be on the east side. Canal side on the east. Somewhere around here, there's supposed to be a door. That's a long fall. Ow. Oh. I jump back up. Yes. Oh. Well. That. <laughs> this has not worked out so far. I gotta say. Not really finding this canal side spot. This is the palace, so I think that I think I'm on the right track now, at the very least. But I'm terrible at navigating these kinds of spaces, just pretty much all the time. Maybe I can crawl through this vent down here? With my Sonic the Hedgehog bubble? Puzzle Canal level 5. Well, we're in the Puzzle Canal, one way or another. Maybe a way in. Let's learn things! Worst case scenarios, I see more new stuff and don't accomplish anything. That's always fun, right? What are you, a dead end? Do these gates all go somewhere? Really? Oh. Oh. Oh, all of these vents might be usable gates. Isn't that interesting? Puzzle canal level two. Canal side, east side. 
How many floors of these are there, though? Maybe I should start from the top? Oh, right. <laughs> That'll let me go through. You just, you just say canal side on the east, though, so maybe this one that's by the closest to the canal is the right one. This is level four. Really looks the same, though. That goes to Vivek Temple. Where's this one go? They both go to Vivek Temple. They all come out of different spots? Is that the puzzle here? Huh. If I go back in here, I come out the same spot. So if I come out the other side, will I be in the back of the building? I'm wondering if this has continuity or if they're doing video game logic to make them not fit the geometric space they're supposed to fit. So I'm testing that. They don't fit the geometric space they're supposed to fit, do they? I just I went from being down there to being up here when I went across the same floor. But there's a puzzle here to where these grates go. That's interesting. That's very interesting indeed. So I just entered on the, on the top of this floor. And if I go all the way across to this other grate, where do I end up? Completely unrelated location. Okay. Well, that's interesting, but not as interesting as I would like as far as puzzles go. More or less just a surprise of sorts to encounter. Is there a way to jump? Can I jump across? Hut! Uh, oh. Well, now I'm just stuck here. That's fine. I just remembered that I have levitate. My stupid brain forgot for a little while, but now it's back. Being less just temporarily stupid. Uh, levitate pants. There we go. Not 100% sure, but I think I might just try lockpicking the front door and then sneaking in and if enemies aggro on me, just running past them without fighting them, which would mean that they won't be aggroed on me because I'm hard to kill. And that seems like a strength that I can leverage. Good luck, me.